Angela Pratch selected the parts for her fixie, from the handlebars down to the spokes, at Natuki two weeks ago. Now, she stopped by the shop to pick up her bike. There, as you can see from my beautiful new bike, they look cool. You can design your own bike from the, from the sort of wheels up, so you can choose. We spent last Saturday in the shop here choosing every single um, component of the bike, so you really do get um, an individual piece, I guess. Each Natuki Fixie features 19 customized components that allows a rider to pick and choose in order to create a unique bicycle designed for his or her own tastes. Because they are so simplistic is to say, oh, I want it configured my way. So then having the front wheel and the back wheel different colors or to have like special tape on the handlebar in your color. So that's what makes them then very mm, desirable. Custom-made bicycles and design-it-yourself assembly are two of Natuki's key selling points. Skateboarders also see personalization and clothing as important elements of their sport. You need to skate with style. Style means what you say, what you wear, what you eat, what you do. You should wear stuff that's comfortable and that fits your style. Hip-hop, punk, and skate all represent skateboarding. But the sport isn't merely skateboards. It's also a variety of related products that create new opportunities for sales and profits. Burning Ice has become a distributor of several international brands of skateboarding apparel popular among Beijing's style-conscious youth. Still, demand for the trendy clothing hasn't caused Yang to lose sight of his main product. Skateboards dominate his shop's interior, both on the shelves and on the walls. I designed the interior of the shop myself. I even made some of the props. We specialize in skateboarding equipment only. There are other shops that sell clothing, for example, so we won't steal their market share. We will put all our energy into skateboards because it is such a huge part of our business. Like with the popular fixies, design it yourself is an important aspect of skateboarding, and each board can be configured in a variety of ways. Different components, from the board down to its wheels, give each skateboard its own personality, and each customer has his own unique demands. Each brand has different strengths. Some might make decks with a particularly good spring, while others make great trucks. So, we can create skateboards that fit our own needs. There are a lot of options available in China now. It's not like the expensive pre-made boards you had to buy before. All right, Professor, let's dissect the business model of Natuki in particular. It's sure. all about choices and customization for this company, right? right? I've got 19 bicycle parts, lots and lots of colors, and it's hand assembled, which is great, mm. but that also makes the bicycle extremely expensive. So, is there still money to be made in this market? Well, I think possibly. So when you customize, the upside, as you mentioned, is um, every product is unique, right, which is very appealing to the customers. But the downside is it's harder to keep the cost down because you're offering a more, wider variety of products but at a smaller quantities. Right? So it's harder to achieve that economy of scale. So that's why even though this notion of mass customization has been very popular over the last several years and a lot of companies are playing around with this notion, but the reality is it's actually very difficult even for the largest companies to go uh, complete customization. So for a much smaller companies like Natuki, uh, if it still wants to make profit while selling customized products, I think there are several things to consider here. One is um, to sell an experience as opposed to just selling a standalone product. Mm -hmm. If you can successfully attract customers into uh, the production process and provide a very interactive and joyful 
uh, production process, then I think the customers at the end are going to be more willing to pay you a higher price for the end product. And also another thing to think about is uh, the balance between varieties and uh, uh, production capabilities. So the trick here is to find that perfect balance between offering uh, a wide enough options to satisfy your customers, but at the same time, uh, not overloading your production system. Right. And another thing to watch out for is cost control. So when people talk about customization, the first thing they think about is, well, it's going to increase my uh, cost of goods sold. But the truth is, well, you also have to think about SG&A, and you also have to think about management-related fees. So these fees will also increase proportionally. Um, so these are the kind of fee uh, questions you have to watch out for. Hmm. I want to bring it back to the market size that Natuki is operating in, Professor, because we've established that it is operating in a niche market, mm -hmm. but it's an early mover in this niche market as well, right? So that's got to give us some good advantages and potentially some disadvantages as well, I would say. That's right, Michael. Um, being first in the market does give you some advantages. So for example, uh, loyalty and brand. So you get exposure into the market early, which allow you to lock in your consumers. So you have a steady group of customers uh, who are with you for a long time. And uh, with that, you can actually gain some brand premium. Mm. And the brand and loyalty usually will translate directly into higher pricing power, which allow the company to enjoy a higher profit margin. So these are the potential uh, upside or advantages. But of course, nowadays, a lot of scholars argue that being first in the market also has a number of disadvantages too. Right? So in, sometimes in the long run, the cost associated being first in the uh, market will actually outweigh the potential benefits. So one potential cost is actually the cost to educate the market. When you're offering a new product or new service into the market that nobody has had, uh, heard about before, it does take time and a lot of resources to literate the market. Um, but the danger there is once you pay for the market education, your competitors can come in and just free ride on your effort and mm. um, on your market education. Right? So that's another related cost. Well, it shouldn't yeah. take that long for Natuki to educate the market, right? Because the core product is still the bicycle. It's a very specific type of bicycle, the fixed right. gear bike. But nonetheless, I think a lot of people are familiar with this product. Let's talk about distribution, Professor, because Natuki has an online presence. It sells through Taobao and JD.com. And of mm -hmm. course, it has its physical brick and mortar presence for such a small scale business. Do you think it's actually necessary to have a physical store? Or do you think it's just simply enough to sell online? You know, I think the answer to that question depends on what kind of business you operate. So if you're only selling finished products um, that does not require much post-sale services or customer participation, I think it makes sense to sell online to take advantage of the low operation cost. But in contrast, if you're selling a interactive experience like what Natuki does, uh, it's not only offering a complete product, but instead it's offering an interactive experience to allow consumers to participate in the production process, then I think it makes perfect sense to have an offline physical store to either use as a showroom or as a place where customers can come in and play around with different components and actually build their own bikes. When you sell experience, when you allow customers to participate in the production process, you develop this emotional attachment. So you know at the end that product is unique to you. You mm. made it, it's yours. Getting the emotional attachment right, that is so important for That's today's priceless. consumption right. society. All right, right, Professor, many thanks for that. Well, Natuki is operating, though, in a narrow market segment. Its price point is high and its customer base right now small. But for Natuki, it's much more than just about selling fixed gear bicycles. Its founder is also trying to re-infuse Beijing with a bicycle culture that was a staple in this city for decades. With clogged streets jam-packed with cars to China declaring a war on pollution, can Atuki take this fading industry and utilize China's strong desire to go green to help supercharge its business? That's up next, but just another reminder that you can always follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter for our current and past shows. Just search for CCTV News. Stay with us.